All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Loop and Learn's T1D speaker series. And this is the first of 2023. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone, and let's hope it's a it's a good year and it's a healthy year for everyone. How about that? Okay, we have a very, very interesting uh, chat today. Um, it is a panel discussion and uh, some presentation on Loop, which is DIY Loop versus Omnipod 5. It's a panel discussion with people who have used both. And we hope to enlighten you and also help you understand how to do things in both systems and, and answer your questions. Uh, since this includes the DIY looping community, we usually put in our disclaimer, which is disclaimer, which is do it yourself. Closed loop algorithm is the loop app. It's this presentation is provided to share tools available to you in the DIY community and assist you in making your own decisions in consultation with your healthcare professionals regarding your own diabetes self-management. And if you were to use with it, the DIY loop, you take full responsibility for building and running the system and you do so at your own risk. Remember DIY is do it yourself, but not do it alone of the loop and learn community and loop are available to help if you need some help. Um, just a little uh, reminder about what we've been doing in the loop and learn community, again, for those using DIY looping tools. Um, we're building a, a resource for uh, healthcare providers who accept people who are using a DIY loop and actually understand it and may even be able to help you with it. Um, we've been building this list. Uh, it's growing and you'll see some notices go out again. If you have a doctor who you recommend or a healthcare professional who has been helping you with any version of DIY loop and you want to share that provider's information, this is the place to do it. You want to ask yourself, do these healthcare providers understand looping? Do they support you in looping? And those are the people we want to share. So if you need a doctor, you can find one. Um, let's talk about today's presentation. It is about loop or DIY loop versus Omnipod 5. Um, topics today are including um, the comparison between the two and switching from one to the other, pros and cons for loop and Omnipod 5, which I'm going to call O5, uh, general O5 tips on how to make it sing and dance and do all the things you want it to do, the differences in the Omnipod 5 settings and daily use, understanding how the algorithm works and learns, and tips on how to best approach managing your T1D or your the person you're managing with T1D with the O5. Uh, we, have, we have a real bang up panel here today and it's very exciting. Um, John Fawcett, uh, is the owner of Fuse Chicken. You don't need to know what that is, but it's pretty cool. He is a developer of Loop Follow and Sugar Pixel, which is a display that's pretty extraordinary. And it, um, he can tell you more if you ask him later. Um, and his teenage daughter switched from Loop to Omnipod 5 a few months ago, and he's been putting it through his paces. Matthew Kitchen uh, is a the Chief Technology Officer and VP of Information Services in the health industry. And his daughter also has switched from Loop to Omnipod 5 and has been putting it through its paces. Tina Hammer, who is a Loop and Learn moderator, is also a science teacher and a homeschool mom. Um, and her 12-year-old son, Reese, uh, did switch from Loop to Omnipod 5 and then recently switched back, uh, wanted She'll tell you why she did that. And Brittany Shipper is um, also a moderator with Loop and Learn. She's a nurse and CDE and mom of five. So you can bet she's busy. And her six-year-old son, Lincoln, also switched to Omnipod 5 pretty early. And they've been pretty happy with it. And she'll share about that as well. And so I'm going to stop share right now and... Um, let me see if I can get to it, stop share. And I'm gonna turn this over to John Fawcett who will tell you all sorts of wonderful things. Thank you, John. Thanks for the introduction. Actually, we're gonna give it over to Matthew uh, who's gonna share the slides yeah. for us from our <laughs> side. Um, I did put up pictures of uh, the, the folks on the panel. And what I noticed was how very difficult it was to find pictures of them by themselves. 
they are with family, they are family oriented people, they, they give so much in this community helping others living with diabetes and it was it was an interesting course of cropping to get single pictures of you all thank you for everything you do all right uh welcome everybody um so i'll get us started and you know just for intro as, <clears throat> as joanne said uh this is what we're gonna we're gonna talk about the two pictures here on the front are just uh uh, two things I grabbed showing, you know, where my daughter started and where she is now. So that that is the the significance of the two pictures. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, so, you know, as it says here, my daughter is currently 16. She was diagnosed when she was in second grade. Uh, and we were she was on loop uh, with Omnipod as soon as it was available. And, uh, and then switched to Dev uh, and Dash in January of this year. And in November, early November, we uh, switched to Omnipod 5. So I guess we will let each person, um, each of the four people, give their brief yeah. intro here. I'll go next. Uh, my daughter, Lily, was diagnosed in 2018, um, almost uh, exactly five years ago. Uh, she, so she started on loop um, about a year and a half after diagnosis. And as most of you probably know, I've written a lot of patches for loop and tried to spend a lot of time trying to bend loop to our will uh, in the things that I couldn't get it to work perfectly for us. So that three and a half years also was a lot of trial and experimenting on various ways to use loop. And then we switched to Omnipod 5 the last week of, of October, just this past uh, October. And um, currently it's been going so well for us that the plan now is to stay on Omnipod 5. I'll let Tina go next. Hi, uh, my son Reese is 12 and he was diagnosed um, almost three and a half, well, I guess three and a half years ago in 2019. Um, started looping in, I think October of 2020. And then um, I'm an experimenter, so we decided to to you know try try the O5 when it came out and got the got the kit and um, held it for a long time. And then one day I was like, today's the day. So we put it on, um, used it for a couple of months, and then um, for various reasons decided to switch back to Loop for a while. And then um, when John was thinking about starting using it, he and I were talking and I decided to just shift over and, and uh, put Reese back on Omnipod 5 and walk that walk with him for a little bit. And uh, we did that for a bit and back on, on loop again and never know where we'll be tomorrow. Brittany. All right. And um, my name is Brittany Skipper. I apologize in advance for any screaming children you may hear in the background. Um, my son Lincoln is six. He was diagnosed in 2018 when he was a year and a half. Um, and we started on Omnipod almost immediately with diagnosis just because of his small insulin needs um, and began looping um, not quite a year into diagnosis. Um, in total, looped for about two and a half years with a short break in between. Um, and then we started on Omnipod 5 uh, pretty early on in the release. We started it um, in June. So we've been on it for seven months and um, we've just really been uh, surprisingly impressed with the system and our plan also at this point in time is to stay on, so. Uh, so I'll go on to the next and let's see. Okay, so I guess we're not going to go into great detail here because each, each one of us has our our slide that has the comparison and each one of us shows a different graphical representation <laughs> of how to show it. Um, and so, you yeah, know, this is mine. Um, obviously, you know, you can you can see the difference. I picked the last month we were on loop and then the last two weeks from when I put this, uh, you know, these slides together, finished putting them together yesterday. So um you know obviously you can see for us uh with me with a, a 16 year old daughter who does not want to you know she wants to be normal 
And um, so this is this is our results. Uh, obviously, loop on the left, and so basically, you know, every number is for us is better. Um, the you know pretty pretty significant in some cases. Um, I you know personally, um, based on some past experiences before we even had a CGM, I don't obsess over A one C because you can have a great A one C for a terrible reason. Um, so you know, I'll look at A one C as long as target as long as time and range is good. But uh, and my daughter had a miraculous A one C because she was living in the fifties all day, <laughs> so we didn't realize how bad things were. Um, but uh, other presenters, is this is this all you want to say when we're on this slide? We'll go into more detail later. Okay. All right. So go on to the next. All right. I have um, the glucose distribution for um, loop on the left and Omnipod five on the right. Um, and this time span is a two month time span um, back from May to uh, mid July for loop. And then the next day in July till, till we switch back to loop in mid uh, September. And they look a lot alike. Um, the, uh, they just look a whole lot alike. <laughs> um, and I guess that's all I need to say. Tina, what range do you have set for this report? I forgot to ask you that earlier. For low uh, in I, range I and high. I use 70 to 180. Thanks. Yeah, I was going to guess by what it says in the low and high mark that that's what it was. Um, all oh, right. I didn't see that. So. I picked this report because if if I run time and range, um, the distribution report out of an ice scout, you actually couldn't tell the difference. You wouldn't be able to know which one's which because they're almost identical. But there's two really cool things that um, I noticed in this percentile report. And the first is if you look at um, right around 3 a.m. So she'll usually, she's, 17, she goes to bed much later than me. She uh, half the time is eating her last meal while I'm already asleep. So with loop, we struggle with overnight highs pretty significantly. And what you'll notice on loop is that um, it comes down, but then it goes back up between three and 4 a.m. And that's when loop was shutting basil off because it thinks all of a sudden she's gonna tank. And so I've noticed on Omnipod 5 that it does a much smoother slope um, to bring her down and bring her down into range. And then the other thing is right around noon, you'll notice on Omnipod 5, it's basically a peak at the top and then it turns straight down. So this is primarily school days where she's dosing as she's sitting down to eat. So there's no pre-bolus. And Omnipod 5 has done a great job uh, cutting that spike off to turn the corner much quicker than loop did. You can see loop, it spans probably 45 minutes at, on a plateau. Um, so those were the two biggest things I noticed on our reports on the differences, even though sort of like as Matthew said, you know, A1Cs tell one story, but th this tells another story is that she's coming back into range sooner. Oh. All right, and then next is my comparison graph. So I chose the last month on Omnipod 5 in comparison to our last month on Loop when we were on the Dove branch with remote overrides and boluses um, and carb entries. Um, so as you can see, for the most part, kind of our average blood sugar is pretty identical, um, but we have significantly less low blood sugars um, and then a lot less of that, kind of that extreme. And then you can just really see that average blood sugar is just so much smoother in general. So we just feel like it, while it compromises, we can't, we don't always get as low as we would like to overnight. Um, Loop allowed us to be able to go a little bit lower, um, but it's just to handle daytime and meals so much significantly better that it kind of evens and balances everything out. So um, just, yeah. That explains it all. <laughs> Oops, sorry, tried to highlight that screen. All right, so 
you know, these, these were, those were obviously our four, uh, you know, uh, collections of information. Um, then, then we've been talking over the past uh, couple of days and we, you know, we ended up combining our thoughts into a single presentation. We didn't think it would flow very well. And so you know, these are kind of some of our collective thoughts. Um, and so I'll, uh, you know, we'll go through them one at a time. I'll, I'll start reading it off and then any of the four of us may jump in and, and, and you know, say why we, um, you know, why we added that or why we, uh, you know, why that has been our experience, what our thoughts are. Um, the, the first one for me is, uh, has been probably the most critical. Um, through when my daughter was only, again, she's 16 and I, I'm sitting here in my mind saying she's going to be off to college in two years and we're not living in a mode that is sustainable, um, you know, with her on her own. Um, way too much texting during the day. Hey, did you, did you predose? Are those fake cards? Are, um, you know, what did you, is that really the correct duration? My nightmare was seeing a night scout 30 carbs because I'm like, you don't always eat 30 carbs. <laughs> Every time I see 30, that means you just threw it in there and you probably intended on chewing up at the end and then forgot or whatever. So, um, for the kitchen family, um, the parental oversight has dropped to almost none. Um, and ironically, she doesn't think it's as user friendly, but what she's doing with it is working, uh, you know, significantly better for my daughter. Um, and we just, again, I can't see the data real time. So maybe that's part of it, you know? Um, so that's for me, that's the, the parental oversight part. It, that's, the, that's the same for us too. So that is probably my number one. And that's the reason, for the same reason as Matthew, that I felt we needed to look at Omnipod 5. She's going to be, uh, she's halfway through her junior year. So we've got a year and a half until she's potentially going away to college. Um, and I felt that um, she wasn't necessarily prepared for all of the deep data analysis that Luke can sometimes require to tweak settings and fix settings. Um, and so my own estimate is that our interaction has dropped by 90% and, and not just interaction between us and her, but us and the system also. So any manual corrective actions. Right now um, on Omnipod 5, we probably average one or less high corrective actions per day. So dose a little extra and one low correction per day. Where loop, it was usually about the same with lows, but um, if you just count, you know, have some juice or some carbs, but when you factor in manual interventions for setting low overrides uh, that you do ahead of time, we're not doing any of that anymore. Um, so it's, it's greatly simplified that. And I feel like it's made it to the point where she actually can step out on her own without us there to where we usually won't text her unless she's approaching 50 um, or she's 70 and has dropped by you know 30 at the last reading. But usually we don't even as parents um, interact with her over it other than urgent low and urgent high. Uh, she's able to handle it all and the system's able to handle it much much more without our oversight on it. For me, um, there's a little bit of a combo there. We have an interesting situation um, in that we do we do homeschool, so we're together a lot. Um, I guess more than more than the other parents here um, during the days, and so it's it's not something where I've set up you know a system like okay this is how we handle it during the day. We just we just ride the wave basically. Um, and with Luke, it, you know, I can see on my phone, I can see on my watch, you know, all the information that I need and I can bullet him from the watch. And um, he doesn't, I, he doesn't need to interact with me about it. So um, with 05, 
in order to bolus him or have him bolus himself, we do need to interact. Unless, you know, if we're at home, sometimes the controller will be sitting on a table or something and I can take it and do it. Um, but a lot of times it's um, such as uh, we do do a do a school a homeschool program, a formal homeschool program where we're not together all the time. So I'm having to call him and text him and, um, you know, say, hey, do this or tell me what this says so I can get some information that I can't otherwise see. Um, so for me, it kind of goes both ways. I guess for us, the less parent oversight is more to do with like other caregivers. So um, there's a lot less interaction that we need to do with school to be able to do interventions. With Luke, we often had to do remote boluses or setting overrides remotely. And there's just so much work that we did even when we weren't with him. Um, whereas now it's very, very simple. And at most we text school for a couple of fruit snacks here and there because a six-year-old's activity levels drastically vary from day to day because um, he doesn't know what he wants to do until he goes to do it. So, so that's where that um, yeah, I, I, easier to good. teach others part comes in, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say too. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew, I'm going to let you explain it stupid smart with the trademark at the end Sorry. of it because that was your <laughs> phrase. <laughs> yeah, so basically um you know loop takes so many things into account and you know uh it's looking six hours into the future it's you know and i'd pull my hair out when my daughter's sitting at 375 and, and basil shut off and i understand why i get the math but um as everybody can appreciate you know diabetes doesn't always follow the equation that we expect it to and you know it seems uh the the simple the stupid smart as i call it omnipod algorithm it puts a higher focus on where you are instead of why you're there and um and you you know i hope this doesn't come out wrong but i i kind of came to the determination that if you're having to lie to your system then it's not working right for you if you're having to put in fake carbs daily you know if you're having to do things that aren't happening then why why is that you know and and so i i felt that you know the, the algorithm or whatever term we want to use in loop is not was not matching um how we you know how my daughter's life was and 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 john produced outstanding patches to tweak it um you know to match more but again as much as i appreciated them two things were coming to mind my daughter's not going to do this in two years. She's not going to be chatting with John at 11 o'clock at night, you know, <laughs> testing out a new patch. And again, I was like, why, why, why am I having to do this? You know, I shouldn't. And it's because it's, it's, it's not working for me. And I, we were about to try out free APSX and, and then we got steered back towards loop because the dash support um, looked like it was going to happen. But um, so stupid smart is, you know, uh, it's just blood sugar high, get it low. You know, it just doesn't, it doesn't take, it doesn't put the weight on, well, I got two units on board that covers it. So we're good. Um, and so that's, that's a lot of the next, the next things in this column. I mean, that's the simplicity um, that gets right into the mistakes aren't as damaging. The, the formula doesn't look as far into the future it doesn't put the weight on the same things and john can can speak to that uh to the nth degree a million times better than i can um yeah i was i was just gonna say that really the the next three or five items in the list are all sort of the same thing mm -hmm. um it's just simple uh it's simple when things are going well and it's still simple when things go off the rails um i saw uh one question that i'm going to pull in right now from amy um what if a teenager forgets to enter carbs or doesn't pre-bolus well what you see on here is mistakes aren't as damaging um that applies to those situations uh 
what we've come to find out is it really starts cranking up the automatic dosing if she forgets to dose or doses late. Um, and I'd say maybe I get a pre bolus out of my daughter 10% of the time. Um, I, she's just walking in, so she's going to correct me if I'm wrong on that. But um, so she's normally dosing as the food is entering her mouth. Um, you can come over here. She just actually said an hour later. So that sort of answers your question. Say, this is Lily. Um, so what the system does is it actually starts dosing more as you're rising, even if you haven't entered, entered a, a bolus. Because it doesn't track carbs at all, it doesn't care about carbs. So we've dosed when you ha we haven't even entered carbs in the calculator. She's eating something, we know it takes five units. We'll dose five units. It doesn't care. So it doesn't care if you have carbs entered or if you don't have carbs entered. So what you'll learn quickly is on those rises, when you forget to pre-bolus or when you um, even forgot entirely is you'll just need to dose less because it's look through the history, see what it's already done for you and then uh, dose what is appropriate based on what it's already done. Can I jump in to ask all of you as you answer these questions, particularly Matthew and John, because you do a lot of interface with uh, people with diabetes, not only parents of diabetic children. Um, are you hearing the same thing from adults? I, I think there are a bunch of adult T1Ds on this uh, Zoom who are saying, Yes, but I'm not a child. How would that apply to me? So as you answer all of these, can you project to what you've also heard for adults, please? Most of what I've heard has been sort of limited to what I see in the Facebook groups, um, you know, which does skew, sort of skew that a little because you don't know the background of the person. Um, you don't know what system they've used before and things like that. So, you know, it has been a little, difficult for me to formulate some thoughts around how it might work for different um, demographics. I, Tina and I have talked about this a lot between, um, between our two kids uh, because you know we have one that's almost an adult and she has one that's still a young teen, uh, not quite teen, almost teen. And even that difference makes a big difference in how you manage it. Um, between the between a six or seven year age gap. I'll uh, just jump in with the next one. Um, and actually, I'm going to skip thinking less about diabetes because I think that kind of goes into everything we've mentioned already is it's taken us less oversight, less thought. Um, if you're high, you just dose. Like Matthew said, you don't have to go try and pull the system into thinking all these variables are changed and set correctly. So then, that, um, let me just say that's hard to get used to <laughs> the less thinking about it. Um, John had to wrestle me to the ground a couple of times. Stop thinking, <laughs> uh, but it's nice. And there is a con on the next page. You'll see that one of the cons that I don't remember which one of us listed was you, you don't have that real time data. Um, and, but so we aren't sure if that's a pro or a con because it does allow you to think less about it um, as long as you can trust that the system's doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, so the next one is perfect settings aren't important. And I think I'm gonna add a little more to that and say, you don't even have some of the settings. So you don't even have to change most of the settings that end up being the most important thing in loop, which is your basal rate that Probably underlies brilliant. everything else. And for what I'll throw in here, because I mentioned basal, for anyone, because I don't know that we have it on here, anyone that's wondering how to calculate your basal rate um, or how to know what Omnipod 5 is using as your basal rate, it's TDI divided by 48. Now, they do weight that differently um, based on the last three or four pods. But if you look at your day-to-day -day, in general, you can get a rough estimate for what it's using as your current basal rate by doing that simple math. Do you need to do that? Or is that just because you're interested? 
Well, not I would, go ahead, Brittany. Yeah, I was just saying, there's nothing that you have to do with that. That's just helpful information, I think, to know, especially if there's like changes, you know, I was talking to my sister who um, is an adult with, um, with type, diabetes and just switched from looping after three years to OP5 and she has like menstrual cycle changes and things like that and so that information was helpful for her to understand just how much of a impact the last few days as there's changes in her body impact what's happening so you can kind of use that information to then be a little bit more responsive if you have some really big swings uh, like illness or other things like that so it's, it's helpful to kind of know that but there's not anything you have to physically do with it it does that adjusting for you so it doesn't give it to you automatically you have to calculate it you don't know what the bit the, yes. what the adaptive result is at all like you are completely blind to it wouldn't that also be useful if your pod fails and you have to go to shots it would be but at the same time omnipod 5 and injections is not the same like at all it's it, just like pumping and injections is not the same your settings will absolutely be different um so it's if, really if you're forced to go on to long acting insulin for a day or two for an emergency mm -hmm. you use that as a guideline usually yeah like a guide but not necessarily an exact mm -hmm. okay thank you one of the mm -hmm. best uses that i could see for wanting to calculate that number is if you start Omnipod 5 and you're running really high, it probably means that your TDI is too low for the system. Mm -hmm. So you can use that to calculate what it thinks your basal is and then do a learning reset and start with a higher basal rate than what it was using in that calculation. Um, so things like that are probably the only times I think you would need to see that. We have we've been on it three months and we haven't switched to manual mode once, so we've never needed it for that. And John, we've John, never. Can you, can you explain um, a basal reset or a reset? What you just said. Uh, yeah. So, um, Omnipod Five uh, keeps all the data pod to pod to pod, so it stores that TDI that it has um, over three to three to what did trying to tell us today three to four pods three to, I think three to four pods yep that's the most it'll store is up to four yeah and so what some people what we see some people doing on the at least I see them on the Facebook groups is intentionally do a reset um, thinking the system works better without the quote-unquote learning um, and so they start over essentially from day one it wipes out that stored TDI history from pod to pod. So you're basically starting with no learned TDI um, to drive the first pod. The only other time that that happens is if you have a controller fail or if you're using the Android app, your Android phone dies and you have to get a new controller or reinstall the app, then you're starting over from day one without any of that learned three to four pod TDI. Yeah, and Tina, quick, you want to take the next ones? Oh, good. I saw it asked. I just want to I'll say on here, TDI is total daily insulin. There was, um, we were talking a little bit, just a tiny bit back about, you know, um, I'll say hormones and such with my daughter. If I got into any more detail, she would kill me. Um, but, you know, on loop, we did, we had days where we had to do a 30% override. And then we'd have a phase related to her cycles where I, we had to do a, just to, for, to be clear, when I was speaking to her, we call it a 30% under ride. Um, and how that's translated in 05 is on the days when we would have done the under ride, uh, we change her target typically uh, from 110 to 130. And that uh, accomplishes the same results. Um, we don't have an equivalent of an override, uh, but we have not experienced the need. Um, it has either something has changed, which doesn't seem to be the case in her, or it handles it more aggressively. Um, and so we don't, we have not needed the equivalent of an increase override. I agree with that with us too. Um, I checked 
for TDI over the last three months. And the range has been 25 units in a day at the lowest up to 77 units in a day at the highest. So it handles a <laughs> jaw drop. It handles a wide range of daily needs. And there have been times when we've had a 20 to 30 unit swing on the same pod from one day to the next. And it has handled it perfectly. So I think that speaks a lot to the algorithm. While it's using TDI, it's also intelligent enough to know when it needs to either ramp up or ramp down to handle those drastic need changes, especially um, that Matthew and I see with our daughters. I've had a little bit of a, a different experience with that because Reese's, um, Reese seems to go through cycles as well. And when he, when he has lower needs, um, it was not really recognizing that. And in the beginning, I didn't think, oh, let me just raise the target. Um, but later on, I did start doing that. And that is just a great tool. Um, I'm trying to just glance at this slide again real quick. Uh, you know, some of these. Oh. Let me jump in and ask you, I uh, see easier to teach others. Um, does that mean your school system? Does that mean a spouse, which also takes in their emotional and, and interest in learning a system? Is this easy enough for anybody? Yeah, I mean, that wasn't, um, that, that wasn't my, uh, you know, point for sure. But I, but I, I mean, I have to say, it, it, I would say it's significantly easier. Again, it's, there's just a couple options. You know, if you're in automated mode, there's very few things. Um, and I would not have been able to explain to a, you know, I don't worry about it because my daughter's 16, but I would not have been able to explain to a grandparent, um, you know, when to do a fake carb if needed with a correction or why not to. I mean, my, me and my daughter still struggled with, you know, the consensus on how to handle some of those situations. So I would argue that it is significantly easier to teach others. Yeah, that was definitely our point um, with school. Um, they used the loop system and then the next year we used OP5 and um, they expressed to us over and over and over again how much easier they find it to use. There's less buttons to push, less room for error with accidentally saving a carb entry without actually having given the bolus. And I think that they just always were afraid that they were going to do something wrong. But with, with OP5, it's just, you know, it's just simple. Like you just push, put in the carbs and push the buttons and it's done and you know that it delivers. And um, there's never that question, unlike you know, there was just a lot of question as to whether or not it was successful or done the way that it should have been done. Um, and that went not just with school, but with other caregivers, grandparents, babysitters, um, anybody new to being able to take care um, of our child. It just was a lot easier to just, just push this button, enter the number of carbs and follow the prompts and you're done. <laughs> so I think it's a significantly easier. Even so that ties in. Oh, sorry. I was, well, gonna say, I was gonna say that ties into the next. <laughs> you always do this, John. <laughs> you go. Okay, I was gonna say it ties into the next two, especially the less troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because the troubleshooting is on both ends with Loop. It's on the build side, the updating side, Xcode computers, and all that. But it's also on the use side. Um, having to train not only caregivers and your child all in the same house, but also having to train anyone that they're gonna be with that may be, need to use that system. So it's troubleshooting from day one of, hey, I wanna use this system all the way through to actual day-to-day -day use of it that's drastically less. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, but I see no waiting from signal loss. Mm. None, no, none, none. <laughs> no, and that's well, because, so yeah, that direct communication between the pod and the transmitter. So if you're in a situation where they step away from their phone and they have that signal loss, the, the communication is happening with the pod seamlessly because it's on body. 
So it kind of goes with that on-body closed loop system piece. Um, so if you can get the controller and um, have it communicate with the pod, which you can do it instantly, it'll give you that blood sugar reading. You don't have to wait for that signal loss, um, the next five minute time frame to give you that blood sugar. So it doesn't need you for Dexcom giving you bad reading or not giving you readings. Yeah, it's, it's not, the Dexcom is communicating the same. The difference is that you're able to get that information sooner simply because the pod and the de the, de the pod is the receiver. So you can get that information when the phone is not nearby. Have, have, you ever yeah. had, have you ever had a problem with the Dexcom when it doesn't give you, you know, you will be without readings for three hours. Um, what does O5 do then? You mean like if the so pod... Text don't communicate. Is that what you mean? Like if you get signal loss, or if the sensor uh, is not getting the signal, so we, a sensor issue. We've had that, and it's similar to warm up, where it will. It's a bit of a black box mystery on what they do, but it runs in what they call limited mode, mm -hmm. which seems to use whatever it was predicting to continue um, mm -hmm. for a certain time period. I think it's maybe thirty minutes or an hour. Um, so during sensor warm up, if, if your blood glucose is rising pretty rapidly, when you stop the sensor to start the new one, it will still start to keep delivering some of those aggressive doses, um, predicting that it was still rising, even though your sensor's not giving readings anymore. Um, we've actually found that to be fabulous. Our Usually our day tens are pod and dex change at the exact same time because she uses her arms and switches arms. Um, and that was always a major disaster uh, in the past that, you know, she comes back on and she's 250 plus half of the time. Um, we've noticed with Omnipod 5 that she's coming back on when the sensor turns on in much better range than she was when we were doing that same changes in loop. On the, um, on the on body closed loop point that that's been uh, very helpful for us. It wasn't even something that I was really, you know, looking, expecting to be such a, a, a big plus. My, my daughter does competitive cheer. And, you know, when we started out on the arrows pod, that was probably the most painful because I'd, I'd be sitting there going around the gym trying to get, you know, I'm like I can I get a little closer and I'd get close enough to get Dexcom data and I'd see terrible things happening, but it couldn't do anything about it. And then we went to Dash and Dev that obviously improved significantly. We could have the phone and, you know, a corner of a gym and sometimes it would get a quick enough connection to make uh, some, uh, you know, a, and give some instructions. But now, um, I don't stress, you know, I, I don't stress if I know she's in an escape room and I didn't get any data for three hours uh, because I know it's still working locally and that, you know, it, it's taking care of things. So the on body closed loop um, has was way more of a benefit than I had anticipated. Yeah, we yeah, um... I'll, I'll add to that. <laughs> Tina, we're just going to talk at the same time from now. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. When we first started using it, it was right before Reese went to half day camp um, in the woods, which um, he went to right just after he was diagnosed. And we, um, one of us basically sat there, not, not at first, but a couple weeks in after we were like, whoa, <laughs> um, this diabetes thing. Um, but we sat there and were ready to help him and, um, and did help him as needed. Um, and this, this we put on him and then sent him to camp, half day camp. And Phil went to work and I stayed home and we didn't worry about it. And that was like the most freeing thing um, because I knew that that connection was going to stay in place and that it was going to going to do that job. Um, and it was just so freeing. Go ahead, John. I don't remember you, now. John. So I'm going to move on to simplified <laughs> carb entry. Have we covered that yet? No. Not so, specifically, but I think it was kind of talked about with like simple to teach others. 
Yeah, and one thing that I really like about it, and I don't think a lot of people realize this, um, you don't have to put carbs in. You don't mm -hmm. have to type carbs. You don't have to let the calculator do the math for you. You can just open it and type a number in. And compared to loop, like if, if, um, if you're sitting at 200 and you add a unit in loop, Basil is immediately going to turn off every time. Um, Omnipod 5 doesn't shut Basil off quite as um, emphatically as Loop does when you do those, those extra doses um, to correct highs. So we actually, uh, I saw some questions scrolling through about do you have to change the correction factor? Um, we have the correction factor set at, um, I think it's 60 right now. I have no idea if that how accurate that actually is because we sort of base that first on what it was in loop. Well, that's based on is, is basal accurate? And I don't know if it really was accurate in loop or not. But now on Omnipod 5, um, it's doing all kinds of changes that you don't even know what basal is. So you don't really know for sure how accurate that is. But what I sort of did some trial and error um, with correction factor and be able to just open the, open the bolus up and type a, an amount into dose is I realized that using a hundred um, accounted for any amounts that it may have already been dosing. So I used a, essentially a weaker correction factor just in my head. And it also allowed me to do the math very quickly. So I look at her number and if she's rising and I'm like, I don't think she may have dosed enough for dinner. I want to bump her down by 25 points. I'll give her 0.25 units. That's the most I think about when I'm typing stuff in is, and, and that's our conversations is take 0.25, take 0.5, take one. We don't even really think about the calculator portion other than when she doses for meals. She just usually plugs it in and that's what it doses when she does the meals. Okay, next ones. Um, we covered superior connectivity, seamless upload to Gluco. I love Gluco. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you agree? I love Gluco too. <laughs> Something went awry with our Gluco and I haven't figured it out yet. But aside from that, I love Gluco and it was seamless before whatever happened happened. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot I'd used it in the past. And I logged into it and I had all this data from like, Omnipod Eros pre-loop. It was still sitting there because I think that's how we shared it with our, our endo at the time. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll pull it up here in a second and I'll move it over to that screen. I, I haven't used Gluco in a long time, but does it, do you like it better than what you get from Night Scout or do you like it better than Tidepool? Or whatever is out there and can you see your total daily dose in gluco i like it yep. better than tide pool for sure yeah, yeah. Did, did my I screen like it better did it, is, is it showing the gluco now or is it still showing yeah. the slide presentation it's got glucose. okay um i like it better than both tide pool and night scout other than um real time like if she's at school and she's rising Mm -hmm. I just have to let the system wait and see if she does. It's usually about a two hour delay for boluses and carbs to show up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the only drawback that I have to it. And this, what Matthew just loaded is actually my favorite thing ever. Um, <laughs> it, it's like Night Scout's day-to-day -day report, except in a single line. So all the days run together because midnight you know, your blood glucose chart doesn't magically end at midnight and start over on the next line. It's all continuous. So you can better see um, if maybe a late evening bolus uh, or carb ratio needs to be stronger because you can very clearly see how that graph changes spanning across midnight. Oh, I'd say the yeah. one beef I have with Luco is it doesn't show you like what is happening with those auto events. Like you can know when there's suspension and you can know when max insulin delivery just based on the bars. But you don't know how much insulin is delivered in between there. Um, 
And so that's always challenging to know. I mean, personally, as like, I see that information in real time on my child's controller can go back and I can see that information, but it's from like a provider standpoint, um, being an, an educator and looking at reports on a daily basis, that's a huge piece that's missing um, for people that maybe don't look at that information. So um, uh, that reports work pretty well for your doctors. Yeah, they we have we have our first endo next week, um, so we'll see. But she her endo when we were at their last was when we she got the the pod five um, told us how to sync it up so that they have direct access to it. So I'm expecting mm -hmm. to walk in and not have to do anything, and they just already have all the data that they need. Yeah. yeah. We ours we struggled a little bit sharing it because it had to do with the fact that we created the Gluco account before um, Omnipod Five created it. Mm -hmm. um, you can create, you can have it created through Potter Central, I think it was called, it, but that didn't do the right trigger. And so I, I eventually I found a thing on the on the app where I shared it with them, and they just gave me their clinic name. And basically, if I remember correctly, they pulled up this exact same screen. Um, yeah, it's, you're um, essentially logging into the pro the patient's profile. Yeah. Um, but it's important, and when you get a new trans or a new controller, you have to pair the controller to Gluco in order for that data to be there. And then you also have to have the provider share code. Uh, so there's two pieces for the puzzle to allow that sharing to happen to your provider. So is our our provider's preferred uh, software, and in the past when when we had an upcoming appointment, they would get in touch and say, hey, remember to upload your data to, or, you know, send it, um, I think we were sending them Tide Pool or something um, with Loop. And then, um, and we only go every six months. So I, it's not even top of mind, but they didn't even call this time. And when I got in touch with them, they said, oh, we already have it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Are you able to annotate activities or anything unusual, moods, uh, stress? No. Nope. Not within Gluco that I'm aware of. Yeah, you can do it in the app. You can add, um, you can add, let me just open it. So there's a little plus button, if you guys can see this at the bottom of the app. And then you can pick from a list. Um, A1C, blood pressure, exercise, food, insulin, medication, notes, weight. So um, I use that to, I use that to add a few things. Was she just diagnosed? I don't know. Oh, Eva, please mute. Thank you. Go ahead, John. Uh, um, yes, yeah, so I've actually used that to add a few things. Like I added a note one time when I knew it was a pod failure, just so that if, if the endo loaded that day, she'd see that, oh, yeah, this was a pod failure. Um, so that's actually a neat, um, neat thing. It seems to me to work similarly to uh, sort of how you used to add notes like that in Tidepool. Let me just add. That in, that in that list that John pointed out, the food part, if you click on food, you can, you can start typing things in and it will bring up the nutrition facts for all kinds of different foods. Um, and it'll let you change the uh, number of grams or the, you know, the size of the thing that you're eating. And it'll just have all the info right there for you. So you don't have to look it up separately on your phone if you're a person that does that. Um, and then you can, you can add the food to the graph and just, you can hover, I don't know if it's a hover or click on or whatever, but you can go back and see at least on a list, on the list in there, um, what exactly it was that was consumed. Love that feature. And I just loaded it and it also has a barcode scanner for foods. Hmm. Yep. I know. So we all, I think, love Gluco. <laughs> um, it's a really well done system that they've made. And it's nice that Omnipod 5 is just automatic. The controller, if you're using the controller, has an AT&T SIM card in it. So it is free uploads for the data. So it just uploads even if you're not connected to the Wi-Fi. You know, there have been a couple of questions 
that I, I kind of quit trying to answer some of the questions because I wasn't paying attention well, but some of the questions on the PDM, um, you don't have to keep the PDM with you. It, the PDM does not, it doesn't do anything by being in range. You know, uh, it's, it's used more like the old school Eros PDM, you know, or Dash PDM even. It's just used to issue instructions when needed. So it, it is not part of the, you know, it's not like we're in loop. It's making decisions and sending it, you know, reading from devices and sending to devices. I want to come back to the last two items in your um, pros slide, please. Um, easier to correct mistakes. Um, so that's certainly not what I've heard. Um, I've heard highs are hard to correct. Can you explain why the statement's in here? Yeah, I'll go first. So, um, you know, I alluded earlier that it doesn't, either it doesn't look as far into the future or it doesn't put as much weight on, you know, things um, like IOB. Um, and when I say easy, for me, easier to correct is, uh, first of all, and for us, mistakes, um, the, the correction takes less time. It just does for us. I, I don't have, you know, uh, the data to say, oh, it takes less time. I'm just, it does. But a high, for instance, there is no, um, okay, I, I want to take a correction should I put in fake carbs or not? Um, so that's for us is a simpler correction of mistakes. Uh, and then if, you know, you're taking, eating 10 carbs for a low, there's no, should I put that in or not? If I do, you know, it's going to do this. If I don't, it's going to do this. And while I understood that logic, um, my daughter doesn't want to think about those things that long. You know, um, she is habit, PDM, boom, 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 you know, and then I'd see it and I'm like, oh my gosh, why did you do that? And I'd text her and, you know, the answer would be, I just did or something like that. <laughs> and so um, that for us, that's what easier to correct the mistakes are, is that they seem to be corrected more aggressively and there's less things, less input we have to provide and less decisions we have to make. I've noticed a lot of people um, posting that s seem like they get stuck on high a lot uh, mm -hmm. are just opening the calculator, clicking use CGM to pull the Dexcom reading in, and it's not recommending a dose, and they don't dose anything and stay high. Um, so that's an issue with their correction factor isn't correct, or they started with if they're fairly early on it, they started with drastically too low of basal in their initial settings. Um, but I actually sitting here can't remember a single sticky high um, that like most loopers have had them um, once a week, if not more, where something was off, whether it was carb counts or whatever, and you're sitting over 200 for what seems like hours on end constantly tweaking carbs, adding doses. We haven't had a single one of those where it's very rare that we actually have to do a corrective dose, but when we do, it immediately turns the corner. But I think if we can jump to the comments, yeah. which I understand are very short listed, and then um, I've got a bunch of questions for you guys. Right, so it's, 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 it's not all unicorns and rainbows. Um, yeah, there, there's definitely things that on the con list, and um, so I'm, I'll I'll start and I'll go through a couple high points, uh, you know, that in our household, my daughter's an iPhone girl, she hates having another device. Um, I've tried every avenue possible, pinging insulin, trying to get any insight, and, and I can't get, I can't get anything. They give the same blanket response every time. Maybe somebody else has gotten something. Um, I don't even know if it's FDA or development. Uh, I'm assuming it's FDA from what I can gather, but need an iPhone app right now. It's either their PDM or a very small list of supported devices. I think they might all be Samsung. Um, and then the, the lots of beeps. I know that's ours. Uh, if you go below 55, it, you're you're going to light up the room with beeps. Three, I think three things beep. I think uh, the your her iPhone beeps, the PDM beeps, 
and uh, the pot itself beeps. And so she hates that, you know, in class. She goes below 55. Um, next one is was definitely one of ours too. Uh, the day three issues are, you know, when a pod, the site, whatever it may be, starts to lose effectiveness on day three. And, you know, I'm on loop, there were times where we were doing up to a 200% override and still sitting in 160s. Um, but that's how we got through day three because she was at school and didn't want to do a pod change. There's not something comparable um, in Omnipod 5, uh, you know, to tell it, hey, this pod's gone to crap, throw everything you got at it. Um, it's just not there. Uh, the real time following, I'm okay with that. I, again, I, I wanted to get there. No, I wanted to be able to send my daughter off to live independently. Um, you know, in the G7, the obviously loop doesn't have to wait for the FDA, doesn't have to wait for whoever those agencies are. And so they could get G7 support extremely quickly, as quickly as Pete could whip it out. And um, I personally have not been able to get any insight there, uh, but you got to assume should be coming soon. Um, the rest of those didn't yeah. i think those were tinas no, yeah not, well it says no extended Some bolus um which is not mine well i don't know if it is or not but no, it, that is available in manual mode in manual mode yes i my that's mine for automated mode i would love to have that feature in automated mode for a little who just doesn't need that big oomph at the beginning and it just would again take away that time and that thought because we then have to do split boluses so just be one less thing to think about to just put it in and just let it do its thing along with the algorithm without having to remember to flip back to manual which i forgot to do sometimes i, I didn't <laughs> go out of out of um uh closed loop very often but i'm not used to doing it and i forgot I just want to throw in something I heard this morning from Dr. Rahel Lon from Stanford um, when he knew we were doing this event um, to please mention that iOS and Dexcom G7 compatibility are still very much pending at Insulate. So there's nothing, don't start taking bets on when it's going to be here. Um, mm -hmm. Right. You know, as you found out, you can't get information because there isn't no information. The most I got was a like to a tweet from one of their support people expressing frustration with their lack of transparency. They, and they liked it, <laughs> Insulet liked my tweet. So that's the most I got. So where do you get most of your support if their support people aren't that helpful? Oh, no, not support. So the support is fine. I'm just talking about they're not forthcoming with future information, um, perhaps public companies, disclosure, things they can't. Okay. But um, that's a, you know, I, I was knee deep and we're still in at times knee deep in loop. And so if something was happening, I knew what was happening. I could tell my daughter, hey, Pete's focusing on this. I think you're, I think we'll be able to use it in a week. And I can't tell her anything, you know, with Omnipod 5. I can't tell her, yeah, that new tiny G7, um, you know, March 7th. And so I don't like that. You get your tentacles in there. We're going to jump to the last slide, so we have time for some questions after it. I'll go through it yeah. super quick. You guys jump in if you want. Um, so these are some fun things we put at the end. Um, we've seen on Facebook groups or various people saying, so for starters, Omnipod 5 is not better than Loop, and Loop is not better than Omnipod 5. They're different. and one's going to work better for some people and the other's going to work better for others our goal here today is to just give you all the information um, about how it's working for us so common myth we saw is a 110 target isn't low enough that's uh omnipod 5's target well that's a 5.2 a1c if that's your bg average so that is pretty low and i think if you look back at Brittany's um data post from earlier is you can achieve incredible um a1c's time and range all of that with them next one omnipod 5 learns your body i see so many people saying it takes months to learn um omnipod 5 is not a learning pump there is there is zero learning in it 
it literally uses the TDI from the last three to four pods. And that's it. So if if you're running high and it takes you months to to get it to keep you in range, it's because you started with way too low of basal or your correction factor or carb ratio are not nearly low enough or aggressive enough. So your two options are to do a full stop and restart with a higher basal or correct a whole lot more often to really drive up your TDI and keep yourself in range. So there, there's no learning um, on it. And we actually had a failed controller and had to restart. And pod one was just as good as the last pod before we had to do a restart. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not specific to time of day either. Like it's the same response all day long. It doesn't learn day versus night. It's the same thing, same algorithm all day long. So if you say that you you would have to strengthen your um, basal, are you taking is is Lily taking more insulin uh, TDD? Well, she's about the same as she was with Loop, uh, but I actually had estimated her basal was somewhere between ten and twenty percent stronger than actuality when she was on Loop. So we basically started with basal that was stronger than what probably most people start with. And I very quickly lowered her carb ratio. On loop, it was uh, one to 6.5 or 7.5, depending on the day. Uh, she is now one to five. So her carb ratio increased pretty substantially, pretty quickly. Uh, the next, well, that ties right into the next. Your loop dash MDI, I don't care, tandem, whatever system you're using, the settings are not going to be the same. Be prepared to change them and um, you're going to get better results. Uh, I guess I have the next one twice. I shouldn't change settings because it learns, so it doesn't learn. Um, if you're high and you do a correction and it doesn't offer a correction, change your correction factor to where you know it will offer the correction that you need. Uh, and that kind of goes along with the next is um, max basal. We see a lot of people thinking that this max basal setting limits how much it does in automated mode, that it won't give as much correction. But the only two settings that alter automated mode are target and correct above. And correct above really only half edits it, it changes it because it only it only sets the threshold where it's allowed to give corrections. Uh, the next two are tied together. This is why DIA should be set to four hours on, or approximately, give or take, on Omnipod 5 for your user setting. So the orange line is Novolog. The green is what Omnipod 5 does if you set the DIA to four hours. You'll see it follows very closely to the line until it's down about 20% left. The blue is what it would look like if you used what you're used to using in loop. Uh, so that would treat it drastically different. Um, another thing we commonly see is people thinking they'll never have to manually correct. You do, if you're high, correct. We actually treat it a little more like automated sugar serving um, from when we were MDI, where it's doing but it's doing most of the sugar surfing for us. There's just times we have to step in and give it a little more. But you don't, you don't um, get the IOB, do you? you don't what's know, that? You don't know how much IOB is there. So if you're correcting a high, you could end up stacking. Oh, you know, you know well, yet. you know IOB. Yeah, IOB is a little tricky too because yeah. um, it, the IOB that it shows the user is a mashup of the manual dose to IOB, which uses your set DIA, plus the automatic IOB, which uses their built-in DK curve for DIA. So the user DIA doesn't change automated mode. It uses their own. So it uses that with what it has dosed over this magical um, basal that it's calculating on its own. So it's difficult to know exactly what's what when it comes to IOB, um, but 
I find it's very infrequent that we actually do have to go manually correct something um, with that. Uh, the last two, um, I've seen people say to dump insulin between pods. Uh, so that's where you remove the pod and before you do activate it, you just push like 20 units through it to raise your TDI. Well, because it, it uses sort of this weighted average over the last several pods, that's not actually gonna do as much to change it as it would otherwise. And then when you add on the fact that it's not actually learning, you're probably better off to just reset the, learn, re, the learning, I keep saying learning, reset the um, controller and start over with a higher basal that represents the TDI you think you're trying to get to. And then we see a lot of people, um, and maybe Brittany can explain this last one, about mm -hmm. um, thinking that it's dosing when you're too low. Yeah, so a lot of people will see, they see the blood sugar and then the, the dose, the microbolus and those auto events, and they read it straight across thinking, okay, this blood sugar caused this. But in reality, it has to be read at a diagonal. So the blood sugar previous is what caused the bolus that's on the next line. Um, so no, it typically isn't going to be bolusing when you're low and there is a, a, a firm threshold. It'll cut off. It will not do any automated insulin delivery below 60. Um, but typically when people think it dosed when it was going low or is low, um, they would have, you have to kind of pull back and see like what actually caused it. Um, and then the other thought is, you know, auto events is not just correction. A lot of people are focused on that thought of correction and it's also your basal. And so you, yeah, you might be in the eighties and below your target of 110, but guess what? It's predicting that you're going to be steady or up to that target. And so, yeah, it's, it's going to give those auto events. It's going to give microboluses. We want that. We want that blood sugar to stay nice and steady there. So um, yeah, hopefully that helps. And we get really, we got really good at um, rather than looking at basal as units per hour, <laughs> we look at it as <laughs> units per five minutes. So mm -hmm. if, if your basal is, um, I can't do the math in my head off at the moment, but um, you, you treat your basal as, okay, I know she's going to get 0.1 every five minutes is approximately her normal basal. So anything over 0.1 is correction. Anything under 0.1 is a low correction on that. And Brittany, this is the screen that you're talking about. Yeah. Um, right. Yep. So the blood sugar below leads to the bolus on the uh, line above. That makes sense. Joanne, do you want to yes, jump I, in I, and start with I the do. Absolutely. You want, you want me to stop my screen share? Are we going to call on people? How do, how do you want to handle yeah, this? Yeah, I'll, I'll take care of it. Um, yeah, we can stop sh screen share. We'll just go to the gallery and watch everybody. Uh, a couple of easy, fast questions, um, and I kind of know your answer, John. Uh, Fiasp, Linjev, Frezza, has anyone talked about using that and what have they done and has it been successful? I use Fiasp and just go about it the same as, as, uh, as I do with Luke. Is it approved? In O five, no, no. I asked well, only Humalog I asked, and uh, yeah, I asked. Uh, I asked Doctor Lai today if she was even aware of any studies um, for Fiasp or Afreza, and she she said no. So it didn't even sound like they were looking into them. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and so no studies on Afreza or how anyone fakes it or adds it in in any way. Um, first of all, there are a ton of questions. This has been our largest event in the three years since COVID began. So uh, <laughs> thank you guys for being willing to do this. Um, your advice is helpful. There are a tremendous amount of pointers and tips that you guys have been mentioning. Um, so what I'd like to be able to ask is may I, when I put out the chat, have you maybe throw in some answers to some of the questions um, in a document that way everyone can access it and we'll try to share it outside of loop and learn um, if other uh, Facebook groups will allow us to do that. Um, so 
if anyone else, uh, Marion or anyone else wants to see what, what, what questions they have. I think there's a, a mind think um, that you, the target, I'm gonna keep coming back to, I can't set my target. And what I think I heard, and I just wanna correct it, is if you were had your target at 110, your A1C would be 5.2 or something like that, and you'd be fine. So it's kind of how we've learned to trick ourselves to make this work. Yeah, and I'd encourage people who are thinking of that to look at their reports. Um, so pull up your Night Scout reports and see how often you are running steady at or below the, this lower target that you're using. But then compare that to how many times you're drastically over target. So for us, Omnipod 5 has been so much smoother um, mm -hmm. up and down. So it's flattened that curve. So by flattening the curve, we're actually getting the same A1C time and range, all of that, as we are with the with a higher target, as we were with the loop on a lower target. John's um, John's didn't start out that way. Um, it took a, it took a little bit, um, and he was very patient and you know very um, calculating, you know, figuring out what to change and how to change it. So you know, there are a lot of people that start on 05 and have a lot of tumult and think that they're doing the best that can be done and abandon it. Um, but John, John worked really hard and figured it out. Brittany worked really hard and figured it out, you know, and um, have a lot of advice to share as far as that goes. Are you able to get a, a good source within Omnipod on these tips that you've been sharing? Or are they very much party line and you guys need to hold a, a weekly forum? to teach people? <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> I didn't follow what the beginning of the question was. I, I just <laughs> Okay, so so you, you had to develop this and talk amongst yourselves to really get a good way to make this work the way you needed it to. It's not something you see in the manual or through their, their training. I, I think that the the need to tweak goes back to the fact that you know the I think the initial target um, is people who who haven't been looping and having the control that that we're used to. Um, so we're kind of coming at it from the opposite side as a lot of those people. And I think a big portion of of our success it is that we did loop first. We went through learning how a closed loop system works in the most severe way possible, which is where you can tweak absolutely everything you possibly want. And you can even rewrite the code to have it behave differently. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you learn that much about how a closed loop system's working and how to deal with lows, highs, everything in between, um, running it in, in a DIY program, I think you're set up better for success when you jump into a commercial program than maybe somebody who came from Dash or even MDI might yeah. struggle with some of these things more than we did. I would agree with that, absolutely. I think Loop First has been a huge portion of our success. We've taken a lot of the concepts and ideas that we learned with Loop to apply to OP5 and to just kind of like tweak how it applies to that particular system. So, yeah, hands down, Loop going on Loop was the biggest, like, biggest change in our lives of anything we've ever done. And mm -hmm. I had a longer slide presentation, but it would have been the Matthew talk instead of the group talk. And, uh, <laughs> um, you know, one of my points was. My daughter never spent the night out until we got loot. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't burden other families with the requirements to, you know, she was very little then, you know, and, and much more, um, you know, sensitive to mistakes or whatever. And I mean, we were up at two o'clock. We, we never, we never slept through the night. We didn't tell her that, but we never slept through the night, probably maybe once or twice a month on just straight Omnipod. Um, and so loop was absolutely life altering. We were in tears. So th this brings up 
a question about remote bolus. How do you manage remotely? I mean, I have a I have a 16 year old I'm trying to make independent. I never did ever. Um, I never wanted personally by the time we were on loop to be doing that. I wanted her to know what we were doing and why. So again, <laughs> little kids, I get it. But from us, it was not a factor. So Brittany, you, you, uh, what, what do you do? We, we don't do much other than following along blood sugars on Dexcom follow and um, just kind of know intuitively like when certain situations like based on certain drops or things that we're seeing how to like have school respond but overall we've not needed to interact remotely quite as much like we can literally go an entire school day with absolutely no interaction with them not having to ever communicate what to do for potentially a low or a high um and I don't think we ever had that with Loop. Um, there was always, even if we didn't communicate with them, like we were doing things on our end to try to get the results that we wanted. Um, so it's been very freeing. I'm able to focus on my job a little bit more. <laughs> I think there's a there's saying in engineering about button pushers uh, mm -hmm. who actually make things worse yeah. that actually make things better. Um, there are so many questions. Uh, we're not going to be able to, to even handle this. Um, there is one question about uh, Kenny Fox and have you sampled O5? And I'll tell you all, he has not, but he's helped people, um, but he hasn't has direct experience. So sorry. Someone should give Kenny an O5 to try on Tessa. Um, give it a shot. <laughs> um, begging the question here, Tina. Um, why are you back on loop if you can make this work as well as you can without the burden? There are several reasons. Um, one of them is the first time that I went that we went back on loop, um, we were having some problems at night where where um, Reese was very nicely in the in the eighties and the nineties two nights in a row, and it it did take him lower than we wanted. And at that time, I didn't think about, well, raise the target um, overnight. And I'm, I'm not sure how that would go because he was where I wanted him at the target that I wanted and went lower. And um, anybody that's talked to me for any length of time about um, Reese's diabetes um, knows he, has, he can shift wildly from sensitive to, to not sensitive and then back again. And um, that makes it a little difficult for us. When he's on loop, um, we throw on an override and then turn it off and, um, and it's easy to handle that way. The second time um, I went back on, th there were a number of reasons. One was I was actually feeling like I wanted to be on top of it a lot more, um, both for what we were getting out of um, the um, insulin delivery experience. And um, also, honestly, I felt myself being pulled away from the information that I need to have in my head to, to help with loop and learn. And I didn't want, I, I wanted to get, get it back in my head more, so. Got it. Those are the two big ones. So um, here's what I think we need to do. And if you four are willing to do that, um, we'll pull together all the questions in chat. Um, we'll share them out with you and you can put in some answers. The results will be available on Loop and Learn Facebook group. If you're not a member, which is fine. Um, you can also go on our website, loopandlearn.org and uh, we'll post it there. And that may be a, a, a repository where we can keep other questions as they come up, uh, trying to make sure you all have a sense of what is available in the market, what might work better for you, um, or how to make it work better for you if you wanna try things. Um, if you have any suggestions of other things that you wanna hear about either on Loop or Omnipod 5, let us know. Um, you can always leave a message for us on the website. And um, I just thank all of you for showing up um, this evening. I think this has been a very excellent panel discussion. You guys really have put an effort into it. Um, I know how hard you work on this. And um, 
this will be put out. Hopefully I'll have the video edited by tomorrow and um, kind of Tina's telling me, remember to save the chat. The chat is saved and um, we'll, we'll put it out on the YouTube channel, which is Loop and Learn, and you'll be able to watch the video. You'll also be able to watch two videos by Trang Lai, who is the chief uh, medical officer for Insulate. So uh, you can bounce around there and, and see what else you might want to learn about. Um, thank you, panel people. You are a, amazing. You are dear friends. Yeah, Kenny. I want a quick uh, question is clarifying. So we have a video of it, but um, I just want to clarify the three of you guys that are saying you prefer Omnipod 5. I think I heard all of you say you commonly used with Loop um, fake carbs. Is that true john you said yes right and well that... i don't know that i'd call them fake carbs i call them fat and protein carbs okay. but, yes. um yes and we don't have to enter as much for fat and protein now on omnipod 5. correct yeah the system handles some of it but they're like for those super high fat and protein meals like I'm bolusing for pizza as we're doing this meeting because we had pizza for dinner. So um, we definitely do some split bolusing with that, but it's less that we would have to do compared to the loop. When I, said, when I said fake carbs, what I meant is daughters inexplicably hovering at 290. It's been going on for two hours, maybe poor management on my part, whatever. I don't know why. And so in a loop world, you can't just give two units. Um, because if you give two units and you don't want basil to shut off, mm -hmm. that's that's the term I was using for fake carbs. Um, mm -hmm. No, that's yeah. good. So John and Brittany, you guys mostly are talking about fat and protein. And Brittany, you said you don't, or I think both of you, so you both acknowledge you don't, do you guys enter, you round up a little bit when you have a high fat protein meal or? or we have to enter carbs all of them delayed like there's no way that any of that is up front everything is like at least one to two hours later okay. um we ate dinner at 5 30 and i'm just now bolusing <laughs> some additional for the pizza so much much later for us but i can do it as a carb i can just put it in as a bolus and what i think that we need doesn't matter <laughs> it's insulin and that's what all i gotta do john how would you guys handle pizza something like that um Normally more like uh, how much did it need last time up front? And then, you know, so less, it's less about here's exact amount of carbs or exact amount of fat protein. Here's how much the dose needs to be now and how much it might need to be in two hours, three hours, four hours. But it's actually become pretty rare that she doesn't just dose everything right up front and it rolls with it. But that's, you know, maybe the one benefit we have where some of her meals are 16 units dosing, which, you know, five years ago, they were two units. I'd never considered dosing 16 units, you know, just mm -hmm. drop it like that. So when you have that large of a bolus, it's, I think it's much more forgiving um, yeah. of a system. Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. agree. I would yep. agree. Cause even though Reese doesn't use that much insulin, you know, ever, um, <laughs> You know, when he eats a burger and fries or pizza or something, you know, something like that, I just like throw some insulin at it and then, you know, and it seems to work really well. And then the aftermath is, you know, easier to handle. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to say too, it's, um, it's really something after the precision and of, of using loop. It's really something to wrap your mind around, um, letting this act more like physiology where you're thinking about it so much less. Why are you laughing? I'm sorry for interrupting. So Lily just handed me a note. Um, I'm completely sorry, Tina. Uh, so, you know, we don't see real time stuff. And and I quite frankly, barely ever go back and look at specifics on gluco. I look at the generalities. Um, she just passed me a note that says, I have times I don't dose all day at school for 40 to 70 carbs and don't break 200. Um, so she wanted, she wanted you guys to know that, that um, sometimes she doesn't dose at all and it handles uh, what's probably dumping in 10 units over a few hours. I wanted to, I know 
we might get shut off at some point here on the timing, but I wonder, there's a post late in the questions from, well, I guess it's not that late now, it's a few up, but from Sandra saying, I selfishly hope the builders of Loop don't give up on Loop at, you know, all at once. And so we are not the builders of Loop. Um, I don't believe any of us on here are direct contributors. We've all participated in some way or another, especially John with his patches. And um, so we, we Again, I, I haven't looked at every name on here. There might be a developer on here, but we are not the builders of Loop. Um, I one of my roles is building the images for the the Windows desktops to be able to build to do Loop, and I, I committed to continuing to do that. I said my support in the group would um, probably drop, and I failed to do that. I needed to pay more attention to my real job, and um, but I still answer a lot of questions. And, uh, but one day I'll probably be stale. And the, the day I answer a question totally wrong because I'm not using it anymore, I'll probably start answering less questions. Um, but I will continue to do the Windows builds to make sure that, uh, that I mean, I'm passionate about giving people who ha don't have access to things better access to things. So that will not stop. I'm not going to let you go. So don't, don't even try. Um, <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you to your kids, um, to, to Lincoln, to Reese, to Lily, and gosh, uh, Matthew, I don't know your daughter's name. I, her name oh, is Annie it's Francis. Okay. No, it's her okay. name is Annie Francis. I wasn't going to put it in writing. She just does not like. Uh... We'll forget it immediately. Um, you guys have been extraordinary. This community is amazing. And just as a reminder, uh, type 1 diabetes is hard. It is constant, it's unrelenting, and that you're all paying attention to this and working the best you can just for a moment, just feel good about yourselves and say, yeah, this is hard, this is hard for our kids, and, and we're doing well. So thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll post this up in, in places where you'll know how to find uh, other answers because there are a bunch. So thank you, everyone. And once again, Happy New Year. Um, we'll be seeing you again soon. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Bye-bye. Thank you.